In the metals quadrant, copper getting weak again, approaching 2019 lows. It's about the third time down there in the last couple of weeks. And then we have the January 2019, right around that same level, about 252, hit about 253 today, down almost a percent. But the critical part about it is if we actually break through these lows, we'll be reaching levels we haven't reached in copper since 2015. So that would be an extended move expected by the copper bears. Global weakness is part of the reason copper is responding to more than just China now. We got PMI numbers out of Germany and France yesterday uh, in the overnight session, and Germany responded a little bit stronger on the headline number, but when you look behind those numbers, we had weakened uh, industrial demand, we had weakened manufacturing detail, we had weakened inventory numbers, all those figures were weak. France was a little bit better, but again, overall, the EU is well below 50 on those numbers, and then we got the same thing here in the U.S. We didn't really get any China news. So copper, while it always responds to Chinese data, is responding to more than just that and extending its weakness. Then we had an early dollar rally, which helped that copper weakness. That inverse relationship between the dollar and most commodities certainly affects copper, but the brief dollar rally was caused by Fed speakers who essentially were not on board for a rate cut cycle. One of those was Philly Fed's Harker. Uh, the other one was uh, Cleveland Fed President Esther George, all talking at the Jackson Hole uh, symposium that's run by the Kansas City Fed. We've got Jerome Powell giving a speech there that will likely affect the dollar, which could push copper, again, all else equal, copper's inverse to the dollar. That could push copper in a particular direction, although the dollar did fall later in the day, did not give any bit of copper at all.